Hello and welcome to another life lesson from an emotional awareness expert. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that my son taught me when he was about nine or ten years old. We'd had a lot of challenges with my son's education. He was one of these children who just didn't quite seem to fit the classroom. And he'd been out of school for, I would say, about six months to a year. We'd gone somewhere on a Sunday and somebody asked my son, what was it like being at home with mum all week, every day? Now, I think what the lady was expecting was for him to say, oh, it's really hard work or it's just be nice to have a break from mum. But instead he responded, oh, it's symbiotic. And both this lady and myself put off real back like what do you mean it's symbiotic it was a word that I wasn't used to using in my vocabulary even though I kind of understood what it meant and so I asked him what do you mean by symbiotic I'm thinking maybe he's got the wrong word and he said oh we learn from each other we both get something from it <laughs> I was like we were even more astounded by his absolutely precise and clear response now, sometimes it's very easy to undervalue what a child can take from the value of something at a young age, even eight, nine, ten years old, and how they put their twist on things sometimes. The words they choose can be a little bit unexpected, but let's not overlook that because it means something to them. And so if you're not familiar with the word symbiotic, it means... When two entities or two organisms or two people le actually benefit from the interactions or the relationship in both directions. And a great example of this is a clownfish and an anemone. And I'm sure most people have watched the uh, famous movie with the fish and the anemone that went off and got lost in the oceans. Um, but yes, that's a very, very good example for teaching children about symbiotic relationships. And another way to look at that is um, interdependence. So we bring children up saying that they need to be independent. They need to learn to do things on their own. That they can't rely on us as adults all of the time. And when we give them that kind of narrative, it's quite scary for them. They kind of feel like they're being rejected piece by piece as they grow up and being pushed out and being told that they've got to go and face this big, scary world in a way that they're not ready for. But when we talk about words like symb symbiotic or I'm trying to think of the other variant of it, and we talk about interdependence and explain how every little thing they do actually relies on other people being around them. They accept growth and progress in a whole different light. So a teenager, for example, who is going through all of the years of all the hormonal changes, social changes in school, having to do all their exams, looking at the potential of careers, um, perhaps getting their first loves and then between the ages of 13 and 19 which is the years they are technically a teenager numerically that's just six years they've also got the opportunity in there to uh, drive get married have children <laughs> and vote and there are so many things that are changes for them on that way that are big things for them to grasp they're major milestones for a teenager moving out of home, going to college or university, right? getting their first job. These are all major milestones. So when we keep telling them to grow up and be independent, are we really scaring them and pushing them into a place of anxiety and a feeling of being alone in the world? Or should we be telling them that it's symbiotic? Like when you go for a job interview, it's a two-way thing. They're not just judging and measuring the teenager or young adult for going out on a job interview. It's a two way thing. They also have that opportunity to interview the company and ask questions. Right. In a relationship with the parents, they're growing up. They may be moving out of home at some point. They will move out 
or not, some don't. But that process of doing so should be an interdependent thing, not an independent thing where they're left to go out alone. And although you may go, well, yes, of course I would help them. Do they know that and understand that from the language that you use when you talk with them? And so for me, it was a huge thing that I understood the value that my son put on a symbiotic relationship or interdependence. And interdependence was another term that we used a lot later on um, in his teens. And it made a huge difference to how we grew trust with him, how we interacted and communicated with him, to be aware of the little words that come out of your head when you're talking to even, even other adults, a partner, to other parents, to anybody. When you're talking about everybody's values in life in your social circles, are you talking about independence or interdependence? Right? You sit down and have a really good think about all the things where you think you do them independently, but are you really independent? And I'll tell you one that I like to think of when I explained it to my children and my grandchildren, is cup of tea. I've got some herbal tea in here. I might feel like I'm quite independent going in the kitchen and getting myself a cup of tea. That's fine. There are some things we need to do independently, just some things. But who made the cup? Who designed the artwork? Who shipped it and sold it? Right? Who actually grew all the different flowers and herbs that are in my tea? And who packaged it and shipped it and sold it and the shopkeepers? Right? There are so many so many aspects to life that we don't stop and really appreciate every single day how every little thing around us actually relies on other people in this universe that we never even meet like the camera i'm talking to you through now the computer screen that's recording it the laptop itself i've got the microphone these are all things where i've had to rely on the skills of other people to manu design manufacture and create these things so that I can use them independently at home as a podcaster on YouTube. And this is what I mean about interdependence as a concept, but at the same time using it to not feel alone. So that's the other one is to bring it into gratitude. I'm grateful for all the people that have the skills to provide me the tools I need, the cup of tea that I need and the cup to put it in. Right? The clothes that I wear, there are so many aspects to life we can be grateful for. And again, introducing that concept to children and teenagers really helps them to build empathy skills growing up, to actually pay attention to life and people around them more, and to think about how we can also look at that interdependence between them and the people around them. Because as much as they go to school and learn from the teachers, I'm pretty sure some of those teachers learn quite a bit from the kids too. Let's not underestimate their value because my son certainly gave me some value. And right now I'm grateful for some sunshine today. It's completely blacked me out almost against the, oh, look at that. So much sunshine suddenly, it's beautiful. I'm grateful for that right now. I'm gonna leave you with that, but interdependence, symbiotic relationships, whether that is between the child and something in their life, or the child and people in their life, or between you as family members, colleagues, you know, everybody around you, look at those relationships and how they work both ways. And if they don't, are you in the right relationships or the right job? <laughs> maybe you can work on them. Maybe it's time to have a shift. But have a great day, everybody. Thank you for listening today. And I'll be back with another life lesson another day very soon. Bye bye.